You know what I don't get? In society, why is it okay to bash Christians, but like any other religion, it's like, oh no, no, it's too sensitive. Yeah, you can't thank enter you, it. I'm like, you. we're a religion too. Oh, like, why are you acting ideas. like that? Thank you for saying that. I think like, uh, the same thing is like re- uh, reverse discrimination, where it's like if you discriminate, mm. like, like if people uh, don't bat an eye, if like you bash white people, yeah. Yeah. like when it comes, because like we're like the powerful ones, like we had political power in the past, yeah. and it's like, oh, Christianity sucks. It's like, yeah. And yeah. you'll even see it in, like, in videos and stuff. They'll be, like, making fun of Jesus. Yeah. And, yeah. like, but I heard, uh, like, what Trudeau was wearing, like, that sweater yeah, that sweater. was, like, with Jesus and, like, the oh, Last Jesus. Supper. And then they yeah. were wearing party hats or something. Like, like yeah. emoji, yeah. emoji yeah. faces. Yeah. 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 It's just, like, it's so just... I why can you bash so every... So like, you, why can you bash Christianity and not everything mm-hmm. else? Everything else is off limits. They're like, oh, we can't we can't make fun of, like, any and religion. religion. That's, that's, that's rude. rude. Yeah, yeah. Like, thought police much? But do you guys... Do you guys think that also comes from, like, people also associate christianity with like misogyny yeah they yeah do. But sure, other, other, why. here's the thing other cultures have are extremely misogynistic yeah. yeah. as well Probably but every other culture but we are misogynistic i think it's no, just a no. misconception like like i said before like the whole yeah. like idea of distortion like so people I'll, are just aren't educated it's yeah. it's the i always hear this it's like christianity is a white man's religion a lot of people <laughs> literally <laughs> say that and it's just the fact that like people <laughs> especially <weird>. being <laughs> and i know <laughs> exactly <laughs> we're not we're clearly not white but you know it doesn't matter like it's just it just boggles my mind because like being a history major like I'm around a lot of like you know uh, things and people with different opinions and I know you know this too like if you say something about Christianity that's like positive during like this like in the past like that's just a no no like you do not say that so people kind of brought that into the present and they're like okay it's still that way we still have to fix it you know what I mean and it's just not the case because again people are kind of generalizing it again I think people associate Christianity with people being white and -hmm. having an advantage in society for so long and now they're kind of like thinking that they're doing the right thing by taking it away from them or trying to like you know give other people opportunities quote unquote like not having a christmas tree somewhere i don't remember where that was i think it was in the united states they were saying that you don't want a, the huge christmas tree in times square or something like that yeah, they, like uh, wasn't there a tree that they called a holiday tree not a christmas tree yeah so like, like it's, it's just changed. Changed. Yeah. yeah it's very it's, it's like, very oh yeah like and a lot starbucks, of people yeah starbucks people oh, the are starbucks the star- okay but that was ridiculous <laughs> yeah. but like yeah there's literally people that are saying like in my, i know my mom's work they're like you can't say like merry christmas you have to say happy holidays like, like no you no. cannot and like people get mad Christmas. sometimes when you say Merry Christmas, they're like, but like no. And like I get that. Like you should be aware of other people's religions. Like you shouldn't just like you know try to like make everyone celebrate what you're celebrating. But again, you shouldn't just like kind of like rely solely on like other people's religions to yeah. represent us. That doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, just to go off on a tangent because you guys said Starbucks cups. I just want to say that it's okay <laughs> if they took Merry Christmas off their cups because. Starbucks is a coffee shop, not like an ev- evangelical yeah, like exactly. organization. Mark if they want to appeal to more people by taking Merry Christmas off to it's sell coffee, that's what they're gonna do. Like that's yeah, fine. Yeah, like, they don't have a business. job to evangelize the meaning of Christmas. Yeah. They have a job to sell coffee. I think exactly. yeah. so. misconceptions of religion come from politics. So a long yeah, time ago, yeah. Yeah, I'm also a history major. There's a lot of pol- political things going on that's associated with the religion. You cannot just yeah, say, exactly. oh, that's just the way the religion like the is. The church like, and the state. There's so like, many other yeah. things involved in that yeah. one situation. You can't just take like take what you want and just throw the rest yeah, of the context away you can't yeah. just pick out the chocolate yeah. and the m <laughs> there's a context surrounding the stuff that's yeah. happened and no one wants to look at that everyone goes oh yeah the crusades were about you know converting everybody I'm like no there's there's a lot of things going on there yeah but so speaking of like an academic setting do you guys think that your faith has yes like had <laughs> an immense yeah. effect okay well you're a religion major okay but I immense effect on like your not only your academic career but your social life I as actually well? have a story about that I this a couple weeks ago I had to write a paper so I was taking Christian it was the worst Christian course I've yeah. ever taken anyways so she basically <laughs> put this like chapter from like this author like one of our textbooks that basically like said that like so they're talking about gender obviously sorry <laughs> so they're saying a bunch of things <laughs> that, like cutting we, out that part <laughs> <laughs> okay. A bunch of things that we don't agree with. And then so they gave us like these heretical primary sources, like the Acts of like Paul and whatever, or like the Gospel of Thomas that's like Gnostic and it's a heresy, you don't read it. So basically like this exchange between like Peter and Christ, and Peter's like, like make her leave for women are not worthy of life. And Christ was like, any woman who makes herself male shall enter the kingdom of heaven. And I was oh like, God. so they're like, so explain what? how the, like the text, like the textbook, the chapter in the textbook, like how these, how the ideas from there are shown in the primary source. So I emailed my prof and I was like, no, <laughs> I was like, I don't like, I can't do this. I was like, I'm a, I understand like s- scholars of religion. were not supposed to 
like have our personal beliefs i was like but i'm not doing this and like thankfully she was like good enough to understand like uh she's like yeah write a paper on why you disagree but it's like they're basically giving their uh subjective views and then telling me to be objective about it mm-hmm. yeah. and it's like <laughs> like don't present your views as fact and then tell me not to have my own personal views on certain subjects because it's ridiculous mm-hmm. for me i had something similar happen um actually this semester so i i'm the type of person who I like to listen to everyone else's view. Like, the way I think is, okay, let me listen to everyone else's view and then make a decision. I'm not just going to go off of what I was raised to believe. So I took a sociology of gender class because I wanted to understand what what are the different types of gender, like, what do they believe in? But then we had to write a paper about it. And because I didn't necessarily align with her beliefs, the prof gave me, like, a really bad mark. And I was like... Just because I disagree yeah. with you, you're gonna make my GPA suffer for yeah. that. And it, I like I fought with her about it, and and she just wasn't meeting me halfway. And I'm like, okay, so there's no like you're not listening to me. I'm trying to listen to you. Yeah. And you had to be very politically like um, correct, correct yeah. about everything, especially in tutorials and stuff when you were talking because people Whoa. were like True. of transgender, yeah. bisexual, lesbian. Um, so if you said anything wrong, like, oh, it's not, it's cisgender, not, like, the normative, like, stuff. And I'm yeah. like, okay, but I'm not knowledgeable. I'm trying to learn. And by you cutting me off every every single time I try and say something, you're turning me more off. Yeah. Yeah. So I think even when you think about it from a Christian view, we have to be mindful about how we approach other people when we talk mm-hmm. about things. And, like, be more, like, humble about things and, like, not dumb it down, but, like, split it up a little bit more mm-hmm. and be respectful i agree i feel like some people just can go into a topic without actually understanding what they're talking about so for us to if we want to put up a dialogue you have to understand the other person's point of view if they don't understand your like your point of view that's that's their own problem and universities pretend to be about dialogue but if you're not following the direct like liberal mentality then you're not you can't you can't speak yeah i had the same problem i was in a gender course and i couldn't say my opinion despite the fact that the university is going to be like oh yeah you can say whatever you want everyone's opinion <laughs> yeah, is yeah. like taken well here yeah but that you can't say anything because mm-hmm. you know that they're gonna like kill you if you try to say something i remember a mm-hmm. once sense. said he's like liberals accept everything and everyone except for people who don't agree with everything and everyone mm-hmm. it's like <laughs> i like that it's like because yeah. it's so <laughs> true yeah. it's like voltaire wrote like i disapprove of what you say but i will fight to the death you're right to say it it's like you can believe whatever you want like go for it but I have a right to disagree. Like, it's okay. Like, I have a right to believe you, that you're yeah. wrong, and that's okay. Like, I just don't like the idea of, like, everyone has to agree with the same thing. Mm. And I think it's really noticeable in our liberal government now. It's like, yeah, it's really messed up. Yeah. It is. Uh, Sorry. Go ahead. Um, I'm also in, like, psychology. And I was, like, in a social psychology course, and they're, like, everyone, like, 95% of the people who are psychologists are liberal. So when they do studies <laughs> yeah. and stuff, it, it's, like, biased yeah, towards exactly. that. And I'm like, are you are you serious mm-hmm. right now? Like, right. not everyone is going to be from, like, the liberal side. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was just, like, going to say something about, like, university in general. What I noticed is that I haven't really had a lot of experiences, thank God, of, like, kind of, like, mistreatment because of my religion. But I have, like, had one prof last year. Um, it was a French course and we were talking, it was like a French literature course and we were just talking about like how um, their inspirations, where their inspirations came from and a lot of it came from Christianity, obviously. So we kind of had to do this project where we had to pick, um, he picked someone like, someone very, very important like in the lineage of Jesus, so like David or something like that and you had to basically present to the class kind of important things about him and how that kind of led to Jesus and like how that's important in the literature in the context of like the French study literature that we're doing. So essentially he was like, yeah, you have to do this, but be aware that this is all fiction. And he just flat out said it. And he was like, no, 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 I'm going to tell you guys this seriously, that whoever believes that a, a person that has so much power came down. It was like the stereotypical like atheist response. Mm-hmm. It was like the, whoever came down when they had that much power and like made himself like crucified and stuff like that, he deserved it. That's <laughs> literally what he said. And he just flat out said it and like my heart was boiling. And if that wasn't like a mandatory like a course that I had to take, like and it was taught by another professor, I would have literally just yeah. dropped it right away. But it's just the fact that like a person in university in a position of power 
thinks it's okay to just say stuff like that. It just really boggles my mind because you're there. You're supposed to have a higher education. You're supposed to be more critical and you're supposed to be more well aware of other people's circumstances as well, having a higher education. And for people like that to take advantage of that, like you were saying before, like professors like literally are just sometimes just taking advantage of that. And they're just like, you know what? Like, I'm going to say what's on my mind. And if you do disagree with me, then you're going to have to pay for it. But I won't like say it to you that like I disagree but you'll see it in like the grading of my work or the way I'm presenting a certain subject stuff like that and I think that's just ridiculous and so it definitely does affect people's like maybe not me but like you guys were saying it obviously does affect a Christian's point of view because it alters how you write assignments it alters how you like think about a professor um, stuff like that if you want to approach him or not stuff like that like it makes a difference even in courses like I took an English course in first year Mm-hmm. And he was cracking jokes about Christianity every week. And I was, like, getting so mad. I was like, you're being so disrespectful right now. And it's an English course. Mm-hmm. I get it. it. For us, sociology of gender and for religion courses, I get it. Okay, you know what? This is their field. They can say what they want. But for English, this wasn't even related to the book we were reading. He was just, like, <laughs> slipping it in there. But it just didn't make sense to me. I'm like, why are you putting... Mm-hmm everyone else in this position and you could hear people laughing too that's what made me even more mad i was like wow so this is like what society thinks of a christian my first year i took an anthropology course and that was a mistake (laughs) but i just wanted to broaden like one it was a course i had like i felt like i had like i I think it was required and two it was a it was just a widen my horizons yeah i believe in creation doesn't mean i can't understand how other people think about Mm -hmm. evolution and and the prof made a joke about how he used to teach a class in the U.S. And that he, he made a joke about, like, Eve being, like, created out of Adam's rib. And he's like, yeah, I can't believe all of them believe that. And they all just start, like, I'm in a room with 900 people. And they all started laughing. I was like, okay. And I'm a small first-year freshman. Yeah. I, mean, I can't, yeah, and can't a room full of 900 people. And my prof is wearing sandals with socks and a t-shirt and shorts <laughs> all year round. Like, <laughs> what's the point? You know what I mean? Like, you want to argue, but it just, sometimes it seems... Better to just keep Something quiet. makes me really mad. Yeah. So I'm reading this book called I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist, and it's like blowing my mind because it's showing us how we're the ones who actually have the evidence and the proof and science points to God's existence, and we're the ones who are being attacked for blind faith when it's actually the atheists who have no evidence, who are ignoring the evidence that exists that points to God's existence, and they're the ones who are like choosing to ignore all of that and say like he doesn't exist because it doesn't align with what they stand for. And it makes me really mad because we're the ones who look foolish when we're the ones who have the proof and the evidence and whatever. Like, some things are, bl- like, the authors wrote about, like, how uh, when, like, the ba- like a few something years ago, NASA came across, like, these ripples and they discovered it was from the Big Bang. And they looked into it and discovered that the explosion of the Big Bang and the expansion of it was big enough for a galaxy to form, but not big enough for it to collapse back in on itself. And they said that it was accurate to the millionth. And like scientists have referred to it as the fingerprints of the maker because to the millionth, like don't tell me that happened by accident. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah, it's just ignorance. I actually watched this video where it was like Richard Dawkins, I think. He's like the biggest oh atheist, God. right? <laughs> oh, it was, oh, <laughs> he was talking to like a priest. And while he was trying to explain, like, the beginning of the world and how it was coincidental and, like, the Big Bang Theory, he was, he said something that everyone started laughing. And because he's such a, like, a a well-known person, he was like, why is everyone laughing? And then the priest was like, you know, you just said you can get uh, something out of nothing, but Mm -hmm. that makes nothing, like, how is nothing, like, where does the nothing come from? Like, it just doesn't make sense. So he was like, your own, your own opinion is flawed. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of flaws in logic. Like there, like if you find a, a note from someone, and then like you say, oh no, but like forces of nature, like it might have happened by accident, like yeah. whatever. And it's like no, because that's completely obviously somebody wrote this note and put it there. So they were talking about like the first life, and they say that DNA has certain letters in it. Mm-hmm. And if you were to explore every single letter in DNA, it would fill 1,000 encyclopedias. And it's like, why does the logic of the note not apply to the logic? of creation like if you don't think that this note created itself by accident how can you think that something as complex and like uh, complex could be like why why did that happen by accident you know what i mean like it's just contradictory in logic we're really off topic 
So like it feels like <laughs> I've like I've noticed at least like in our society and like in school it feels like people can attack Christianity as much as they want without any repercussions. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to like other religions like Islam for example, like if you say one thing you can like go to prison, you can like whatever. Isn't there like a law now like Islamophobia you can't, bill, yeah, you can't which I Islam. literally don't think is a thing. Like, like I don't does, think it's, it doesn't touch on your right to it speech why like can't that, that's yeah exactly what it's doing. It, does. Anyway, it does and like why can't we just why can't it just be like why is it just about is like why can't it be about any other religion right like no one should have the right to like say negative things yeah. about buddhism or whatever you know what i mean so like yeah so i feel like people can get away with it when mm. it comes to christianity yeah if, if your prophet had been bashing islam instead or you're, you're like teaching, yeah people would have people would have like yeah. been yeah. suing him by now and no and yeah. like yeah. sorry can i just say something yeah really? <laughs> i just remembered when you just said that like i remember this girl she said something uh, he said something about christianity i remember to this one girl and then he was like asking her a question about christianity basically and then she's like in the beginning she was like kind of like she was kind of saying like oh, no, 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 I'm not Christian. I'm definitely not Christian. And she, like, rolled her eyes. And then she's like, but I think it's this. So, like, everyone's, like, whenever someone responds, and responds to this question, yeah. they're always like, I'm not Christian. Or they, like, they begin with, like, they don't say, I'm not Christian. They would just say, oh, what did they say? They said something so, like, um, they're like, oh, yeah, I was really, raised uh, in a Christian uh, household. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one. Yeah. And so, like, people, yeah, yeah, I'm a non-practicing, or, like, I was raised in a Christian household, mm-hmm. like, meaning that, like, that's a very, like, traditionalist kind of viewpoint. You shouldn't have that anymore. Yeah, they don't very, associate themselves. With exactly. Christian. So they're they always like, oh, I only know this because, like, I know David's <laughs> a descendant of, like, I mean, sorry, like, Jesus is a descendant of David because, mm-hmm. oh, it's just, like, taught to me when I was younger. It's kind of, like, more, like, history, fictional history yeah. than it is, like... Mm-hmm. Or they're, like, ambiguous about they're like, oh, I'm not a Christian, but I believe in God. And yeah. Like, no, but like, I believe there's like okay. something out there. Like people, that's the thing. People don't like to take the responsibility of actually searching. They just yeah. kind of rather just conform to what's happening now and what's what they think is. I'll tell you what it is though. It's moral accountability because if they do admit like, oh, God exists, Christianity is true, whatever. Like they're gonna have to give up everything that they enjoy doing that like is not. Like, I, I want, like, it's, it's yeah. sinful. Like, they, if they have to give that up, like, for example, like, people would rather manipulate the truth than hold themselves morally accountable for what they do. Mm-hmm. So, like, abortion, for example. If a baby's not a baby till it's born, like, if you're killing it, like, okay, that's fine, because it's not a baby, even though in reality any self-respecting scientist will tell you that a baby is a baby from a moment of conception. Yeah. So people do not want to be held morally accountable, because if God exists, and he does, like, they have a problem, because yeah. they don't want to be held morally accountable like they don't want to believe in right and wrong they want to do whatever they want i think i think atheist in general like to be an atheist is to be closed-minded because i respect people who say they're agnostic they're like i don't know for sure that god doesn't exist Mm -hmm. but i don't know for sure that he does exist so they're willing to to take that step and and figure it out but people who are atheists it's like how do you know like where is your proof that god does not exist and there's no way they can yeah there's no way they can actually do that so like to be an atheist in my opinion is just shutting out like all yeah. other options yeah they always have to wonder about what got them there like a lot of people who are have who are like full-on hardcore like will not believe in god are probably people who have been maybe not but in some, most cases i've noticed it's people who have been hurt by the church yeah or have been driven away by a certain community by the people mm-hmm. of the church exactly yeah. people who are supposed to be like representing christ like we're supposed to be ambassadors of christ and if people are driving them away they think like this is christianity like i don't want anything to do with it like thanks but no thanks she would be like she would like contradict herself every lecture so for example she would talk about like how i've told you guys this like how like uh, adultery is like horrible and like islam like people will get stoned or whatever and like she like flips the slide and then she starts talking about muhammad's 13 wives mm-hmm. yeah. and then she's like women and men like absolutely they're so equal like the quran says like men and what like i've made for you an equal partner so when a woman in islam wants to divorce a man she has to leave everything behind her children her money her property whatever she can't like keep anything if she wants to leave and i was like tell me again how equal women are in islam to men and it's just yeah it's it's ridiculous like don't promote your view and then like like bashing christianity along the way yeah like i was reading this article about this woman who's trying to justify the verse in the quran that says women like men can hit their wives or men can Mm. hit women and she's like and then like along the way in her article she's like yeah like the at least the quran is like more equal than like the bible in like the judeo-christian thing and i was like what bible have you been reading like Mm -hmm. it's just so frustrating the thing is they take stuff out of context they'll take out like one verse and they'll Mm -hmm. be like that's that's what it is they don't look at the context or anything (laughs) um but i think 
if you if like at least for me when I think about Christianity from my outside perspective it kind of sounds crazy like it sounds like <laughs> yeah. mythology yeah. like some god was born in a yeah, manger yeah. but his 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 mom was like a virgin yeah. and like all this other stuff mm. so it the one thing is yes science is there to prove like Christianity and that there is a god but um, at the same time there's a faith component mm-hmm, of course so I think people need to realize that if they want to convert it's not just gonna be like oh everything makes sense mm-hmm. it's it's a personal experience with God that you have to develop over yeah, time yeah. and people like think like when it comes to certain things so uh, they feel like they have to have all the answers to all the questions that they have like especially when it comes to Christianity and it's like you can't know like in science for example you can't know absolutely everything about absolutely everything but there comes a point where you have collected enough information evidence to come to a solid conclusion even if you still have questions that weren't answered like you have enough to come to a legitimate conclusion you know what i mean yeah they people just don't apply that same logic when it comes to like christianity or religion and yeah and i think also what makes christianity so much different than other religions is like when you tell someone that oh god loves you like how many religions Mm -hmm. that like you know people say that their God, their version of God loves them. Like, they're very confused by it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes us different than anybody else is love. Like, at the end, love, like, literally, and all this is cheesy, but, like, love conquers all. Like, it's the most, like, important thing. Like, your love for Christ, your love for others. I was actually Um, asking um, about, like, one of our servants. I was asking him how, like, how do you explain that Christianity is, like, the go-to religion for you? Um, He was, like... If you look at every other religion in the world, you will never find a God who will sacrifice himself Mm -hmm. for for you Mm -hmm. and for the sake of love. Like that ultimate sacrifice, that unconditional love is only found in Christianity. It's not to say that we are superior to other religions. It's just this is clearly found only in Christianity. Yeah. So like going on to the last question, do you guys have any friends or family who've left the Coptic church? And like, would you guys... If something ever happened, would you guys consider leaving the church? Like, would that ever happen or no? I don't know if I have any friends. But, like, I was driven away from one church. But, like, like I said yeah. before, like, I had SMSV to fall back on. Yeah. But, like, the biggest thing that, like, question that runs through my mind is, like, if I didn't have SMSV, like, where would I have gone? Mm-hmm. You yeah. know? And it's really, it's, like, dangerous. Yeah. Like, people are always concerned with oh, evangelism, like, the missionaries. It's like, hey, what about the people in the church? Like, they're just as important. Yeah. Like, I don't like the idea of, like, triaging. Like, oh, at least these people know, like, God, whatever, and they're focusing on the people who don't know him at all. It's like, no, everyone is equally as important. Like, I don't know. I, think I thought about leaving. Um, I actually and? thought about leaving. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's good. I, I actually thought about leaving the church. Like, I almost became agnostic at one point, and then I turned back to the church. Um, because when I went to church, it was all about... The, the people were cliques. It wasn't, there wasn't love in the environment. Um, so I was like, I'm sick of this. I don't understand the traditions. The tradition seems like too much. It just doesn't make sense to me anymore. I want to explore other things. Uh, but I actually ended up coming. I was never like, I was in and out. Like I had a foot in and out. So I was never like fully like, I'm, I'm done with God. Um, but I did have to experience God personally for me to make that step back to him. And it's, it's definitely a leap of faith. Uh, I do actually have a friend who, multiple friends actually, who don't want to go to church or they only go for their family. And I think that's a problem actually in Coptic churches. A lot of people go because their family, because their family's going to force them to, to do it. And it's like, once you've reached a certain age, you have to think about things for yourself. You have to ask questions for yourself. And a lot of um, abunas actually, or priests, I don't know who's going to yeah. be watching. <laughs> um, priests, yeah. Um, a lot of priests say like you should be careful about doubting your faith but the ones that I've talked to and the ones that are like the most missionary are like doubting is actually helpful because it it forces you to seek out those Mm -hmm. answers that you need to grow stronger in your faith but the problem is if you do not seek out those answers it will push you away from God Mm -hmm. so you need to be you need to take that initiative to do it Mm -hmm. um um the the friends that I have who left the church it was because I don't want to give too much detail, but pretty yeah. much they were, like, lesbian. Okay. And yeah. when everyone found out, they, like, like she she posted it online. And when everyone found out about it, they there was, like, a, a an aunt 
um, who never talked to her before, and then she was like trying to preach publicly on on Facebook about it, and she was like, the verse says this this in public, uh -huh. like everyone can read the whole conversation. It's like if you really loved me, why would you put me in this position in front of everyone? Mm -hmm. She's like, I just want to be loved, and I feel like I've grown I've grown more in my faith with her partner than inside the church where she's been judged her whole life. So she actually uh -huh. came out and she left the church for the most part. Um, I don't I don't know how to approach her about it just yeah. because like, that's very sensitive and with that particular thing um, you have to be very careful because it's not only like a sin it's like a lifestyle yeah so it's it's one of those ones where you have to tread very carefully yeah it's also very difficult to address mm -hmm. And the church hasn't even addressed it completely. I feel like they, I feel like they try like to. Really they try, try to, yeah. but it's not. Yeah. It's, I feel like no one really yeah. knows how to do Like, we understand it yeah. to, like, as far as we're concerned, but we actually don't know that much yeah. about it. Like, I think if, like, we also, we have a responsibility to educate ourselves more on the subject if we want to address it properly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise we can just end up driving more and more people away. I'm sure mm -hmm. that's not the first time that's happened. And actually, um, even, so... Uh, I'm not gonna name names, no, but no, no. Um, <laughs> but um, a friend of mine was telling us a story mm -hmm. about how a, when like the older generations, a lot of them went to like a shisha place because it was like the cool place to go, and <laughs> I guess now. still now, yeah, mm -hmm. you have people still doing that, but um, instead of the so there's two scenarios. Um, same scenario, the shisha place. Everyone was going there instead of going to church. So their parents would drop them off, and then they'd all walk over to the shisha place. <laughs> wow. No. Um, go to church. <laughs> yeah. And then one Abuna approached it where he went to the shisha place. They actually both went to the shisha place. But one of them sat with them and just had a discussion and had a normal discussion with them and just tried to talk and understand where they were coming from. The other one yelled at them, embarrassed them, and when talking to these guys after, they actually told me, I don't want to go to this church anymore. I feel embarrassed to go to communion because I have to look at Abuna. I don't want to go confess to him anymore. And it was all, like, the way that he handled it made them further away from God. Mm -hmm. So I think when you're trying to teach people, like, about, like, a sin or a certain thing, don't approach it like you're above them or don't, like, mm -hmm. rebuke them in that sort of way. I think you have to get on their level and be like, hey, I'm, like, I'm not perfect either. Like, I have my own sins to worry about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, like, I just want to say that, like, I think a lot of people tend to, like, hold priests to a certain standard and that we forget that they're humans too. They make mistakes. And if you really want to be, like, you want a relationship with Christ – it's all, it's a two way street. Like you have that responsibility as well. Like to address the religion based on the book itself, on the religion itself, not based on the people. And that's our problem is that yeah. a lot of the times we tend to give off this like vibe of like Christianity is all on love. So therefore love is associated with the human interactions in the church it has nothing to do with God himself. A lot of the people like are just kind of like associating Christianity with the people that are Christians, not the actual religion itself. Well, because mm. we're their representation. Yeah, so, like, but... Like, we are people's only win... Sorry. It's fine. It's still recording. Oh, yeah. We're, <laughs> we're all, like, waiting. <laughs> we're, we're people's okay. only... Wi like, when it comes to people who have not... Don't know anything about Christian... We're the only... Like, for example, I don't have many Christian... Like, I have, like, two Christian friends. So everyone else in my life she is... Me and her. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yeah, you guys. No, I mean, like... So when it comes to, like, people... Like, I'm... Like, my group of friends, none of them are Christian. They don't believe it. Or I'm their only window on Christ and Christian behavior. And because where else are they going to go to yeah. see that? And if I'm misrepresenting that, they're, like, if this is their only source of, yeah. like, God's light or, like, the fragrance of Christ. Like, they're going to be like, no thanks. Okay, but, like, yeah, I agree with that. But also, like, I'm just talking about, like, based on, like, the question, think, like, you're asking about the people that were already in the church, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, based on that, mm. I think they already have yeah. a very good... But, like, you're totally right, like, about the people that are on the outside. Like, we have that responsibility as well. But I also think it's their responsibility to not just judge that mm. religion yeah, based yeah, yeah. on the people. Because a lot of people tend to do that. And it's an easy, like, way to get out if you don't like it. Just see the people oh I don't like it okay I tried like let's go mm -hmm. if you really have that like crave and desire to like know Christ and to know his like his teachings like you will make that effort to make it happen you know what I mean like you're not only gonna fall on like 
the people. You're not only going to, like, rely on the people to kind of tell you what is Christianity. Mm-hmm. But I think for for people who are trying to come back to the faith, like, when you hear stories, it's always about that first step. Like, when talking to the friend, he said that they still remember it to this day, and it's been years since that, like, that shisha place thing happened. So, like, they remember the abuna who sat with them and didn't judge them and actually wanted to know more about them versus the other abuna who, like, made them, like, scared and, like, not want to go to the church. So I think you, like, especially with people who are on the border, you have to you have to be very careful about how you approach them and how you view yourself. Like, um, you want to make sure that you're, you're showing this non-judgmental thing. Like mm-hmm. non non judgmental view. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just very like yeah. yeah. You problem, gotta be careful. The problem is, so study has been opening and accepting a ton of like things like homosexuality or stuff like transgender. Yeah, transgender, all those things. While the church is still like, I understand the the stance of the church, but at the same time, we're not mm-hmm. using the same like welcoming thing. Like even if you have done something wrong, we should talk it out. Mm-hmm. Not yell because, and because push you away and they run back. But there's a fine yeah. line between acceptance and approval. Yes, I know. So, like, it's really hard saying, to... It's like it's like it's hard to define. I'm saying, like, yeah, yeah. be careful. The but I'm saying it's difficult. Like, pull we out, can't yell at make them. people... Yeah, but we also can't make people think that we support what they're doing. I never said that. Yeah. You, have to, yeah. you just you have to open a dialogue, though. You can't... But I think, like, the problem with, like those kinds of subjects is that it's more open it's kind of harder to hide so people tend to judge you more whereas like even though it's like like christianity considers it a sin like any other sin you know what i mean it's just like it's way easier to hide that you have like an an addiction like yeah then you know you know like you're because you said before it's a lifestyle it's harder to hide Mm -hmm. and i think that's our problem again being like judgmental within the church is that we kind of like just see something and we're like, oh, we're better than them because we don't have that sin. Yeah. Whereas like we have way like we have so many other sins that <laughs> yeah, we exactly. need to work on. Like you need to chill and like relax and like kind of like know that like listen, you're not better than them just because yeah. it's harder for them to hide something yeah. that's within them. Like you know, it's just not right. And I think something we do is like well, like we judge others because they don't sit in the same way that we do. Exactly. So it's kind of like you like you did a bad thing. It's like oh, at least I didn't like do this. It's like yeah. <laughs> but you're like, you're still doing you're still something. trash. Like, yeah. It's not. <laughs> yeah. But like I think like the church needs to have a conversation about that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like we've never talked about transgender. There or, like, is a priest that's like studies he talks it. About it. Yeah. Yeah. Just, and but I don't know about that. It's not he. He's a study. I it. personally like it was a very very intense intense like he. I don't think he was expecting because like being like I don't think he's from here I'm not 100% sure but I don't think he's like originally like he didn't he wasn't born and raised in like North America so I don't think he really knew how serious this issue was over here Mm -hmm. especially Mm -hmm. so I think he went into it and thinking that there would be like one or two questions but people were really asking him like tough questions like why though I don't understand he was like no 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 no. it can be like regulated or it can be like resolved and I know this guy that now has a wife and like it's just like Thank God that there's people, like, trying to address the issue, but it's also really really important how we address it as well. And I think that's our problem now is that, like, we – it's very, like – like we're, you're walking on eggshells right now like be careful what you say and what you not say because even people in the church like me like I still am tr- struggling to understand it and to understand why is it wrong why is this like you know like why is this like more important to address than any other sin you know like stuff like that like it's just um it's actually confusing. like in high school so one of my friends was actually gay and my parents were like don't hang out with them they're gonna influence you this and this so it's like I think that kind of mentality is like I get I get it for like they come from a different culture but in Canada like I don't think you can think mm-hmm. like that like you have to treat yeah. them like a human being you can't just be like oh yeah. no <laughs> I forgot being gay yeah. was contagious yeah, yeah like, <laughs> I, I just don't understand that and I heard that in the Kanto community a lot like yeah. a lot of parents are like oh no like that them. person yeah. has like a lot of piercings or that person has a lot, a lot of piercings yeah. yeah. oh, <laughs> I'm like really wow that I have a tattoo piercing. with a huge tattoo on yeah. the yeah. that one no, piercing no, no. is going to do like I just don't understand that I think I think appearances matter a lot in the Coptic church and mm-hmm. that needs to change. But That's again, why I like appearances is also like representing God. Like it's okay to have a tattoo. It's okay to get your piercings. But like also we have to do it within an aspect that like you represent 
Christ, like, there comes a point where too many tattoos, like, gets tacky, mm-hmm. you know? Like, and, like, if people, like, like, okay, you do you, but we have to represent Christ. Like, it's okay to, like, tattoos and piercings. Like, like our it's body fine, is our whatever. template. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, if you have, like, sleeves. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like what are you doing? <laughs> Literally, you know? like, on all so fours. It's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, there's... And again, when with the idea of, like, not hanging out with certain people, I think it's just not only... I don't think it's gonna like rub off on you. Like you're not. Gonna, no, of course. Like, imagine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it's the like I, like I said before, like the fine line between approval and acceptance. It's because it's just really like how far can you have a friendship with this person before you start agreeing with what they do? Because like in Romans it says like those who like will go to hell like not only do the same but also approve of those who do so. Yeah. So it's like it's just really like mm. tightrope to walk. I think all I like that's yeah. a lot of. So I went when I went to Egypt. A lot of people have they've done conferences to address issues. Especially I don't know why they're leaning towards this, but the subject they talked about the most was homosexuality. Mm-hmm. So they asked them. It's like a it's a workshop group. So they have two different sides, and people just have an opinion. Whatever they talk about, then they talk it out and figure it out. So one of the questions was, would you if you had like a coworker at work and he invited you to his wedding, he's getting married to a guy, would you mm-hmm. go to the wedding? And the people that said, like, they're, they're, they're just each making their own decisions. The groups right. that said yes are in one group, and the people that said no, then they talk it out. They may disagree with each other, but they're, they're like, talking. Mm-hmm. The, so apparently one uncle just went up to the side that said yes and just started ripping off their badges. And he's like, yeah, you guys are not worthy to be here because clearly you don't know, like, the values of the college church. I'm like, but there are other options. Like, that's what yeah. I spoke to said yes. Uh, sorry, she said no. But she, she was saying, like, if I wanted to tell them about Christ, I would meet them outside. Because going to the church means she approves of the action. Yeah, and saying no, but why are you saying that? Yeah, so later they would be like, why did you not come to the wedding? And then she'd open up a dialogue that way. Yeah. But the uncle's like, no, you said yes, so clearly like you're not worthy and stuff like that. Yeah. I think being in a certain place like is also like you agree and promote certain ideals just by being there. Like because if someone is doing something, you automatically okay, well this person agrees with like whatever. So Mm -hmm. it's like okay, but like even if you don't, that's how it's perceived, and you're promoting whether intentionally or unintentionally like this idea yeah um i kind of worry about the next generation i i like because i was raised in a more like sheltered i guess environment Mm -hmm. i knew like my beliefs and the church's beliefs well but for the next generation where everything's very open i'm kind of scared about the kids Mm -hmm. and like if you if you introduce them to that like the sex ed thing like super early then they might be like I don't know how to explain it. Yeah. They they just might have be more open to those ideas because it's not founded in them like strongly mm. as as we do. So I think you should like shelter them for a while like as kids and tell them like to love them and everything, but around high school I think that's when you can like let them figure mm-hmm. it out for themselves because they have like <laughs> they have the the, fo- the foundation, but it's it's just like school implementing that kind of idea, the liberal idea like straight from the get-go. It's like what if the parents don't want that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that's going to be a problem for the future. I think, I don't know if that's true, but I heard it was going to be optional, but I, I really.